we go. All right, cool. So, hey, guys, um, this is Ted with the video tip of the day, and today I'm doing it different. Today I'm not doing it in front of my whiteboard. Today I have a special guest because I keep seeing this question pop up all the time. Um, my guest is Steve Morris. Steve is with Dynamic IAQ, um, and he's like vice president of, was it training and sales or something? Yeah, training and sales. It's Dynamic Air Quality Solutions. Right, yep. So, um, the... Um, Steve is the guy that I've known him for like 20 years and he's the guy that I would trust that knows the most about IAQ of anybody I've ever met uh, to the point of like he geeks out on this stuff so much that he's the only guy I know that owns his own laser particle counter. Uh, That's right. It's like lab equipment. I don't know why you would buy one of those, but he's got one um, and he's got his own ozone particle counter and all the stuff. He owns one personally. So uh, when people start talking about these things, I'm going to trust Steve to give us the real scoop on the major question that I keep seeing popping up in the last couple of weeks on all the Facebook groups, and it's this question, is, hey guys, what do you think I ought to do about offering IAQ, and is it ethical, and how do I offer it, and how do I not lie to people, and what should I do, and what should we do? That? So we're gonna discuss that today, um, and that, and then uh, we'll start with that. So why don't we start with um, the first question that everybody asks is, do, does anybody know in anywhere in the industry, because you know your products, but you also know all the competitors' products. That's right. Is there anybody out there that knows anything about whether or not any of the products are effective on COVID-19? Well, that, that's kind of a loaded question. I'll answer it this way. I, I've done a, as, as you know, Ted, we've been inundated with that same question. I mean, literally hundreds of phone calls a day. So we've been doing this since 1982. So we got to reputation in the industry and it keeps coming up coming up but asking the same question just like you are now and the direct answer is uvc with the right microwatts will kill a virus the, uh, the uh, uh, novel coronavirus is a virus and it will kill it now has any product been tested to kill that physical virus the answer is no i don't even think they have the uh the virus available for people to be You'd have tested. to get a culture to test it with. Yeah. Right. Now there's people testing it for, for vaccines and things like that, the medical community, but for physical products, I, I'm seeing ads out there that are, are run, they're running ads. We kill the, the coronavirus. Well, you know, that that's half true. It, it's probably going to happen with here again with the mi right microwatts, right exposure time. There's a lot of variables there. But our product and anybody else's product that I'm aware of has not physically been tested against that virus. Right. So you can't gotcha. physically say, yes, we put our lamp or our uh, ionizer or our ozone generator or our hydrogen peroxide uh, generator and put it in that virus and uh, an area with that virus in it and kill it. That's right. not right. to be said. So let's, let's, let's then talk about what does it take to kill a virus? Well, that, it's kind of an easy one because viruses out of all the bioaerosols and microorganisms in the air, it's the easiest one to kill. You know, there's viruses, there's bacteria, and there's mold spores, uh, and there's other kind of fungi in the air. Well, spores are very difficult to kill because they have a shell around them. Bacteria, uh, most of them are multiple, multiple cell uh, or microorganisms, and they're a little bit more difficult to kill. Viruses are single cell microorganisms all they really are is RNA or DNA that's wrapped in, in uh, protein, and UVC energy will eat up protein. It'll poke a hole in it and mess up the DNA and the RNA, and it won't allow it to, to grow. So it's either going to kill it or sterilize it. It's an easy thing to do as long as you have enough exposure time and enough light. Uh, there's a lot of tests that have been done on UV, and they'll put the you know UV in a Petri dish and put the light two feet above it, and, and voila, it, it kills it. But when we're in the HAC industry, we're trying to kill it as it's moving at four or 500 feet per minute. When you do that, then you have to have higher output lamps to make that happen. Right. So your Petri dust has just become a hockey puck sliding under your lamp. Yeah, exactly. That's the way kind of we explain that. I like that example. We used to say it's like a Frisbee. Right. You know, it's like a, you put the Frisbee under the lamp. Yeah, it's going to kill it. But you play Frisbee back and forth with it. It's going to you need more power or more dwell time, one or the other. To or, make it or it has to go through there more than once. Yeah. Yeah, well, so. see, the thing is, when you talk about microwatts, there's different microwatt outputs that it takes to kill different viruses and different bacteria and different fungi. Uh, the, some viruses are easier to kill than others, and same with bacteria. 
So, but to sterilize it, to disrupt its DNA, that's a lower microwatt output. So okay. even though you might not kill it per pass, you'll sterilize most of it with the right output lamp. Okay. So talking about output lamps, I know we've talked about this in the past. You know, I'm going back 10, 15 years when you used to come do trainings for my company and stuff, right? Right. Um, and there's, you know, some of them were barely a blue light, Right. And we're not going to badmouth your competitors or whatever, but we will, t we will say right away that some of your competitors do a good job, right? But you also have some that are like barely a blue light and it is UV and it is the right frequency, but it's not enough microwatts to do anything. Well, you know, the way we explain it to technicians when we're training, you know, I always say if, if I lit a match, would it be hot? And they all say, oh, well, yeah. I said, you, you can burn your hand on it, right? Said, yeah. I said, can you heat a house with it? Well, they said, well, no, it's just one little match. Well, one match is one BTU. It takes tens of thousands of BTUs to heat a home. Right. So even though it's the right technology, doesn't mean it's the right design. Right. And it's no different with ultraviolet energy. You, you can use low output lamps, and that'll be fine for killing something on a coil, you know, keeping the, the, the coil clean, but the coil doesn't move. You know, right. the, the goal with indoor air quality is to kill stuff or sterilize it as, as it's moving or take particles out of the air or oxidize gases. And you're doing it in an environment where you have airflow. You know, right. we're not only concerned about where the light's shining, we're concerned about what's going through it and what its capacity it is of killing those microorganisms or right. sterilizing. And it also matters where you install it. Like, is it in a duct next to a turn or is it got a nice big, long, straight piece of duct where it can get it more time? Yeah. In, in view well, of the light you're hitting some things right in the head i, I just I, I probably got 100 emails like this in the last couple uh, weeks here but i got one today specifically and it was from a tv station that was uh one of our clients who was going to run a uh, be on tv and they were going to do some a tv spot on it and the broadcaster sent me an email and said i can't find anywhere where it says that what your exact this is the words that used ted what your exact kill rate is on a bacteria. Mm -hmm. And I sent out an email back. I said, this is way too long for an email. You know, give me a call. But I did send him a couple copies of things that, that I've written in the past that talks about the variables that you just mentioned. Right. It's, it's speed. It's temperature. It's a micro output. Where it's, uh, the lamp's located. How much contact time you have. Right. And like you said, if you put it in the bottom of a boot right next to a filter, well, you don't have much contact time. If you put it in the middle of a plenum where you got, you know, three feet up and three feet down, much more contact time, much more ability to kill it. Right. So there's a lot of variables there, including what's the microorganism. And if we're talking about sterilization versus kill. Right. So it's not a yes, no answer. And of course, we go to COVID-19. Right. We don't really know what the time is for that one at all. But we know what the time is for some of the similar ones like SARS because you've tested those. Yeah. Well, well, SARS and MERS and some of the and uh, coronavirus also can 25% of colds are caused by the, the coronavirus. But when people think of the coronavirus, it's it's news to people. But they discovered it in 1960, right? So it's not new. Uh, SARS is part of it as well. This is a new strand of it, yeah. and the difference that it, it I I got to believe you know without testing it specifically, it's just as easy to kill as the rhinovirus, as the H1N1, or anything else. They're all right. pretty easy. Yeah, and we're, we're saying that, but at the same time, for legal reasons, we have to say we haven't tested this. We have we not tested know, it. We don't right. know if it's you know 25% harder or 10% easier or something. We just don't know. That's exactly but right. We do know, we do have data on a bunch of them. Right. That you have. So, yeah, with, with that said, you, you just have to make, uh, be careful what you claim. That some of the ads that I'm seeing on people are selling me, they got to, or showing me, they, they showed a big picture of the virus and we kill this. Well, well, yeah and no. <laughs> you know, right. it, it, you're showing a picture of the, the novel coronavirus. It, it's causing COVID-19, and you're claiming that it kills it. Well, did you test it? Right. You know, and there are, comp there are manufacturers saying it now, too. And, and we're not going to make that claim until we can physically make it. But right now, we can say we can kill viruses. So the then, yeah. So the other thing we talked about before we started recording is um, the fact that it would need to be an aerosol that's moving through the air for us to be able to deal with it inside the HVAC system. So, right, um, well, so if someone coughs or sneezes, it, mm -hmm. part of it goes in the air and part of it goes and lands on the countertop or the floor or something, and we can't do anything about that part with an HVAC system. Well, that's a great question and or, or statement, 
And the, I, got, I can give you a bunch of examples, but I got a guy from Canada sent me an email this morning and he said, you know, I just read on the CDC that it said that uh, this stuff of the coronavirus is, is all over counters and it's on surfaces and it's not airborne. And so uh, what good is it to put a UV light in someone's furnace? Well, Google it. it it'll tell you uh, the virus stays airborne for three hours. It'll, it'll Part of it on, does anyway. Yeah, right. yeah. It'll, uh, I mean, if you sneeze right down on the, car, uh, on the counter, it's going to sit there, you know, but it, it lives on counters longer. Uh, stainless steel and plastic, for, for example, if for whatever reason, it likes that. And it'll live 24 hours, sometimes two days on that, that surface. In the air, though, it, if it's in the air and you have the right airflow and you've got three or four times an hour, it's running through an air handler, and it's stuff that's suspended for three hours, we're going to have an effect on it inside you. Right. So what we're saying is let, we have no idea in a particular single sneeze, right, that half of it landed on the counter and half of it stayed in the air or some number. What, we have no idea what those numbers are. That's but exactly for right. the part that stayed in the air, when it goes through the system, we will be able to deactivate it or kill it or do something to it for that part of it. And for the other part, get out your Clorox or whatever and clean your counter. That's right. And, and what I like to tell the guys is, is you can use words like, instead of saying, we killed that, say, hey, be proactive. You know, whether or not it killed the virus, it's still good for your air. You know, right. I, I think one of the things that's is driving me crazy here, Ted, is in the last few weeks is, now all of a sudden, jump! Everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. Where, where were you 30 years ago? And we've been preaching killing viruses and, and controlling bacteria for for years now. Now all right. of a sudden, everybody, I get it. You know, there's a lot more media on it now. Right. But uh, and, and I think you and I talked about this earlier. I know we did. We talked about it earlier about um, some guys are not going to run ads now. They're saying I'm going. I'm. I don't want to mislead the public. That, that saying nothing is worse. Right. You know, right. Lying is worse than saying nothing. Right. But, so on a scale of one to ten, on a scale on a scale of uh, not one to ten, but like what's the worst? The worst thing to do is is pull your ads off. The best thing to do is run ads that work, that are legal and not I might say legal, but are uh, ethical and yes. informative and you know and that kind of thing. And you know, don't make claims you can't back up in that. And you know, so probably the worst thing is to just do nothing. <laughs> you know, right. Well, because their the customers are going to ask you. They're, they're be, people are becoming more and more aware of it. They're Googling it. They're reading about it. Right. So it, it might be a question that comes up. And if it's not, you should start with getting the dirt, dust and debris out, having the system run at peak efficiency. And oh, by the way, we have other products that can control some of the allergens in the air. Right. No different than you would be talking to a homeowner before this ever happened. Right. So let's let's just back up for a second because we're talking about UV so far, but there's other stuff because you got you got you guys sell also products that are particle uh, collectors, you know, different types, all the way up to true HEPA systems, which uh, you guys still make right. those, right? Yes. They're kind of look, they're almost the size of an air handler or a furnace. I mean, they got a fan. Well, we have a, and, yeah, yeah, a bypass HEPA that they'll yeah. take a portion of the air and run through HEPA. And then we have uh, right. what we call PMAX, polarized media air cleaners, 24 volt air cleaners that- Right, right. Uh, but I mean, some, some of the things are pretty sophisticated. Yes, are, I mean, they're, and, absolutely. And they're, and they're, you can, and they're not, they're not gonna be a hundred bucks or something. They're gonna be, you know, they're gonna be sophisticated. But you guys make the whole range of that stuff. Um, right. So, and you know, some of that stuff has the UV and everything installed in it and, you know, all in one unit and you can basically set it if it's in a basement, like where you and I live, you know, you're in Chicago, I'm in Denver, we have basements. You could put it next to the furnace, put a bypass to it and then everybody makes the, you know, the logical thing, but all the air is not going through it. It's like, well, eventually it does if it goes through it four or five times, you know. Well, everything we do has been, t it, it does make sense if all air doesn't go through it. About 30% of the air goes through a bypass HEP if it's designed right. And right. we've done tests without any other filter in there. And we're getting 95% of 0.3 microns in a home, 20, right. you know, 3,000 right. square foot home. Exactly. If you put so a polarized I media in line, it's not going to take 90% out every pass, but you're going to get a high volume with several air changes. You're going to get at 97% of 0.3 microns. So, right, right. And results so, about so you same. start you start with the particles and remove the pollens and the dust and the stuff like that and then you still have the bacteria and the viruses and all that stuff in the air and that's when you need uv and it's a separate thing and i see these people saying i'm going to use this product that product that product i mean i'll mention some of them i won't put you on the spot they i'm going to use a remy halo i'm going to use an eye wave i'm going to use whatever and put them in the duct and it's going to clean up everything it's like well not necessarily uh we need to be clear about what they do right and well, research we, we, the specs of what they do you know? Yeah, we don't even have one product that does it all. You know, there's, no, right. 
We right. use in our, and you've seen it, Ted, in our literature, we use the, the pie chart with the, from the Centers for Disease Control with the three phases of contamination. And particles, it takes something different to collect particles than it does to kill or sterilize a, a bacteria or a virus than it does to oxidize the gas. You need three different technologies to get that done. Right. Right. So let me, let me ask you some of the questions here because um, some of the UV, obviously there, we're talking so far about UVC light that will deactivate or kill depending on, you know, let's, let's be clear the difference between the two. Killing, if I'm understanding, see if I'm right, killing means the, the virus has gone through there and it no longer is alive. Deactivating means we didn't kill it, but we basically sterilized it so that it can't reproduce very well and it becomes pretty much inert. Yeah, well, it, the end result is the same. If you kill it and breathe in a live, uh, dead virus, it can't affect you. If you breathe in one that's sterile, but it's still alive, then it, uh, it, can, it can't multiply. In order for it to make you sick, it's not one, it's millions right. of them. That right. We're the host and it, it grows and multiplies. Right. And then, I mean, the reason why we get sick is we, put, we bring these in and they multiply in our body and our immune system can't handle it and it, it goes into overload and we get sick. Right. You know? Exactly right. But yep. if, you're, if you breathe in, you know, I don't know if it takes, I don't know, 10 billion of these things to get you sick. If you breathe in a million of them, it's like a 1% of enough to make you sick. So who cares? Right. So yeah. if they're deactivated, right? Yeah. Deactivating, sterilization, and, so, and kill. Different right. Things. So we go with, we go with um, the, the light so far, the UVC kills or deactivates those things. But some of the other things that UV does in certain ways is creates um, ozone or hydrogen peroxide or something else like that. And it seems my understanding is that some of the claims that are being made is that, well, we don't need to use the light. We just create the ozone or the peroxide, put it in your house, and then it kills everything and it'll even do it on the countertops. Well, you, you got to be careful what claims. I'm hearing that. I'm not saying it's true. I'm hearing that that's what people are thinking that it does. Well, right? let's, let's, let's go through that real quick. You know, it take, there's UVC lights and there's what's called full spectrum lights. There's UVA, B, and C, okay? And, and then UVV, which is a full spectrum, meaning it creates all of them. Right. So when you get to down to that level, it's measured nanometers. That's 185 nanometers. That has a reaction with oxygen or water vapor, and it's going to create uh, either ozone from breaking up oxygen, or it can create uh, hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2, by it, you know, attaching itself to uh, water vapor, uh, humidity in the air. Right. So those two things are oxidizing agents, and they will absolutely oxidize gases. But to get to the kill zone, they, the, the amount it take to kill, the testing that's done on some of these products is done in, in, in small test chambers four by four, six by six test chambers, and they put a unit in there and they turn it on and put Petri dishes with bacteria in there and, and fill it with ozone and lo and behold, it killed everything in a dish. Well, you wouldn't want to be living in that room. Right. You know, that, that doesn't- It's enough ozone it to kill you too. It. Yes, <laughs> right. exactly. Right. Does exactly. Does it do it? Yes. Does it float around and kill stuff on kitchen tables and cutting boards and stuff? I, I would say no. Well, I mean, it probably kills something if they're measuring it down to a small enough amount, but it's not enough to do any good. So why are we talking about it? If you put that much of uh, hydrogen peroxide or ozone in the air, it would be dangerous to your health. Right. So, right. Yes, it would kill stuff on counters, but that, it doesn't get to that level. And you don't want it to get to that level. No, well, for, clearly not. Right. Oxidizing obviously. agents. Right. We have a small oxidizer as well that, that does the same thing that uh, will oxidize, either create hydrogen peroxides or, or ozone, and, but it does it in the duct. Right. You know, we, right. We had all those air changes. We're oxidizing in the duct, not in the, not in the breathing space. Right. So, so the bottom line for this question is, you know, what should an ethical company that's trying to take the best care of their customers be doing? Right. And I know we went and had this discussion. I have my own ideas and I wanted to you know, verify with you, make sure we're all on the same page. Right. Um, so like, what should we be saying to the public? What should we be doing to create, the best information out there so that no one's misled, but they're saying also at the same time, not becoming silent and going away. Well, it would depend on where you're at in the market, how long you've been marketing. If you've been marketing into air quality for forever, since you've been in business, continue to do it. Don't do anything different. Educate your technicians when they're on the calls to work the call the right way, to educate the consumer, have the right literature or videos. We have video books. We have stuff you can put on iPads. Uh, just to educate the consumer. Don't scare the consumer. It's not about right. fear. It's about education. And then let them decide which phase of contamination you want help with and which they want to keep in the air. 
right. uh, keeping the, the system clean and running at peak efficiency it has really nothing to do with indoor air quality as much as it does saving them money. So you, you should take that approach first. But then, you know, saving them energy. EPA's got a study. One twentieth an inch buildup on a coil. That's, that's the size of thickness of a business card. Reduces the output by 21%. So it doesn't have to be caked with mold and mildew in order for it not to function correctly. So keeping that dust over there conserves energy. And oh, and by the way, that stuff can get in your air and, and, and cause, uh, aggravate asthma and allergies. So that's how you transition into, uh, I'm at home with the dog barking here. Yeah, I know. I got a four-year-old running around. Just see my daughter walking around? Like, so. <laughs> we're, we're locked in here. We're locked yeah. in with the, right. I, and I don't know, I just announced that we can't leave, I guess. I don't yeah, know. that's all right. Well, yeah, that's no, crazy. But anyway, you, I wouldn't do anything different than you're doing. If you're just kind of getting into it, don't use scare tactics. You know, just get in there and say, here's what the manufacturer says that this unit does. We can be proactive uh, and put this into your system. Can't guarantee you're not going to get sick, but we can guarantee you're going to have better air quality because of it. Right. So we, let's talk about the products that are out there because um, obviously, well, let's just talk about what you guys have uh, that, that are probably the easiest ones to do. Like we talked briefly about the big HEPA filters. I think that's probably going to be more than most people are going to sell and use and what most consumers are going to buy most of the time. Um, so there's, there's a lot of stuff you have that's easier to use than that. Well, uh, actually, if you look at our, our filtration or air cleaning, when you're talking about particle control, the bypass HEP is probably 15% of what we sell. Right. That's what I mean. It's not a big part. Right. Yeah. right. 85% is the polarized media air cleaner, which is uh, the 24 volt that just slide into the filter. The right. Filter. So, they, so just so everybody understands, these are the ones that fit where your one inch filter used to go. You wire it to 24 volts. You install it in 10 minutes. It's super easy to do for the particle part. Yeah. Well, just... Simply stated, particles are positively and negatively charged. This, when you wire it in, it creates a polarized field. Every fiber has a positive side and a negative side. We allow for good airflow because we have a, a carbon grid that opens up the airflow. So we have great airflow. So it allows the air to go through. Right. The air is carrying particles that are positive and negative, And this attracts the opposite and burns it onto the cell. That's how we remove it. Right. HEP, HEP is, does it by having small holes in a, in a media. Different type of way of doing it, but it, they both work. Right, right. So we do particles, you got that. Then you have the other units, which are the UV light systems that mm -hmm. go in. And your, some of your direct competitors are the ones I already mentioned, like Remy Halo and the iWave. And there's, you know, dozens of them out there, right? Um, and let's, we, we, some of those, though, have like shrouds over the light. And mm -hmm. uh, why the heck would someone do that? If, if the light is what it takes to kill the dang thing, why would you hide the light? Well, there, or why would we they hide the light? I'm not saying why would you hide the light. Why the heck would they hide the light? <laughs> well, we our, our ozone light, our ozone producing light, like their ozone producing light, we do cover it. And we right. cover it so we can have an adjustment on it. We can turn it up and down. It's got two cylinders on it that opens or closes. Right, right. Uh, but UV, you're absolutely right. In order for uh, a germ to get deactivated, virus or bacteria or mold spore, whatever it is, uh, it has to physically be in contact with the ray. Right. So covering it, you eliminate that, uh, the microwatt output. And with that said, you have to have a high enough microwatt output to kill it while it's moving. There's a lot of UV lights. We have great competitors. We're not the only one that works. Right. But there's a lot of UV out there that, that's designed just for the coil. I'm not against that. But if we're going to do airborne stuff on a return, we got to have a high enough microwatt to kill it while it's moving at four or 500 feet per minute. Right. So what yours is designed to do is go in the return and hit moving particles as they're moving and do something to it where right. some of them are designed to park it above a coil to keep the mold from growing on the coil. And, and we have that too. But right. But some we, of them are designed we, for that. Right. right. We sell uh, the way we teach is selling packages. Your shock and awe package or your Mac daddy is going to have a HEPA filter, a PMAC, a, you know, polish air cleaner, or UV light with high, a high output and an ozone light and a unit above the coil. And right. then we go from there. And it, it's totally up to the homeowner uh, what, you know, what fits their budgets and their needs. Right. So what we would say is um, do your homework on what the unit's supposed to do that you're selling, even if it's one of yours. I mean, obviously, don't take the one that is for the coil and stick it in the return and say this is the one that kills, that does something to vi viruses. It doesn't do enough because they, have, they yeah. have a different one for that. So even your competitors, some of them are you know, just really weak little lights and some of them, and I know at least in the past, you guys had like the strongest microwatts out there. Was that correct? 
Yeah, that's still correct today. And um, the, the, the ones that are, have the lower output lights you put above a coil, most of those companies, they don't say anything but that. They're, they're not claiming they killed stuff in the air. And that, that's, they're, they're taking the high road. We are the coil radiation guys. And that, this right. is what we think you should do. Uh, and we take a different approach. We don't disagree with that, but we also think you should kill it or sterilize it before it ever gets there. Right. So the Same point being, with, though, for the for the contractors out there, right? research what they're saying it does before you run around making claims what you saying what you're saying it does. You know. Right. And yeah. and that. So so let's do this. Um, for you guys, I've got people calling me here. Um, so what you what you. How do we get a how would someone get a hold of you guys if they're you know looking for the great products like that? Let's t let's go there because obviously we're talking to you. You know what you're talking about, and if you want to go and use the dynamic uh, air quality products, they're available. Well, they're 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 on back order at the moment apparently from what you told me, but at least they're out there. We know that w it works, you know. Yeah. So let's start with how would someone get a hold of you guys to do that. Uh, well, I have a, uh, Michelle Hogan works for me. She's my business development, director of business development. And she would be your first point of contact. But uh, just to, for this uh, podcast here, uh, they can get a hold of me. My number is 630-417-4998. Or they can email me, email me at smores, that's S-M-O-R-E-S at dynamicaqs.com. And I can give them all the information they need on our product and, and all right. the plans. Right. Cool. Um, so, so the first office, the first offer is get a hold of you guys to figure out what they can do. And you guys even have them in some distributors around the country and stuff too. So they may find it at certain locations wherever they are in their city. Well, actually, uh, that my division only sells direct to contractors. Okay. Uh, we do that for a specific reason. We have we have different uh, brands that. Uh, so that you're not competing with everybody in your market. Uh, okay. And we do that usually through the groups, but we have some, uh, when I say the groups, the affinity groups and franchises, but we do have an independent line as well. Uh, so okay. it's limited distribution, number one. And uh, the products we have through distribution is our older model, just because we had it there for 30 years. Right. But, but, but the uh, point still is they could find the products at some of your retail, or I shouldn't say wholesale, wholesalers will carry Not it. the stuff that I sell. No. Okay. Okay. That, that's good to know. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, the stuff you're selling is not going to be, not going to be at like the local distributor. Okay. That's exactly um, right. So, so the first thing guys, if you're going to get into IAQ, um, the recommendation here from the experts, find out what it really does for sure. Not every product does the same things. Some of them are mostly going to generate ozone and peroxide and they don't do enough UV to kill things that are moving through a duct. Um, the real deal seems to be that, when you cough or sneeze, some of it's airborne, some of it's on the countertop. And our claim in the HVAC world is that we can deal with the airborne part, whatever part that is, and we can't do anything about the countertop. Hey, you know, call Molly Maids and have them clean your countertop. <laughs> so, you know, um, call, a different, call a different contractor for that, right? Um, so that's the first offer is get a hold of Steve if you have to and set yourself up with an account and order some product and start selling it to people knowing what it does. Um, and there's an offer that I'm going to make that I'm going to tell you guys right now. Um, what I'm going to do over the weekend here, if I'll do it at least once over the weekend, but I'll do it ongoing here for the next few weeks for guys. If you're trying to get into this and you don't know how to do the marketing and put that together, I'll help you do it. I'll do it for a super cheap price. I'm not going to, I have a program I run for contractors that runs weeks to teach people how to do marketing and business development and all this stuff. For this, I'll show you how to build the how to build the ad copy, what to say, what not to say, how to build a video if you want to make it that you can be in. I'll show you what the script is going to be. I'll show you how to position it, place it on Facebook or wherever it needs to get out in the marketplace, how to build the page on your website to drive people to. We'll do all that for you. I'll do it for a, a pretty inexpensive price. Um, just you know, contact me, hit me on Facebook chat, uh, hit me on Messenger or whatever. It's the easiest thing to do is just hit me that way. Um, and we can talk about it and get you set up and I'll do it. We don't even have to visit. Of course, it's remote. I'll just do it like we're doing a video here. So um, that's can how we can- Can I one thing to that, Ted? Yeah, you go uh, ahead. Just, just on our end, uh, we, we have great products and, and obviously I'm gonna tell you that because I work for the manufacturer. But uh, beyond that, we have great training. I've got nine training reps around the country that have different territories. So when you sign up with us, you get assigned to a trainer. 
And that's, uh, we have video training. We have 19 different modules online that, that right. you can, techs can watch. We have WebEx training. We have on-site to do ride-alongs. So it's not like uh, we dump product on you and say, good luck. You're right, doing the marketing right. in. Absolutely. That help. Yeah. And then we do the training as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you sign up, if you sign up with, with Steve, with dynamic air quality systems, um, they're going to take care of making sure that your you and your guys are actually experts at what you're talking about. And you know what the heck is going on instead of, you know, wondering, am I telling people the right thing or not? You will actually know. That's, that's the right. thing. Uh, that's the good thing. Um, so yeah, what I would do guys is, um, you know, get with Steve if you have to and sign up with their stuff just to get the training about what works and what doesn't. And, you know, if you're not going to do that, then please, we're begging you go look at what the other manufacturers, what their spec says it does and follow what it says it does. And then you won't lie. Now, as far as what I'm saying, Hey, I don't care if you're using Steve's thing or not, if you use something else. I'll still help you set up the marketing for it, but let's just be clear about what it does when we do so. Okay. Um, so go ahead, oh, get, hit me on Facebook, um, hit Steve on the number he gave, and I'll put that in the comments here, um, his phone number there, so you can get a hold of him, and uh, in his email also. Again, Say that again, your email again. It's S. Morris, S-M-O-R-E-S, yeah, S-Morris, at dynamic, yeah, right. <laughs> at dynamicaqs.com. All right, cool. So, um, Let's hey, thank Steve for doing this today. I know you were super busy and thanks for helping out the whole industry. Cause that was, I, I was just getting frustrated watching everybody making like all kinds of comments like, Oh, well, who's going to be liable if they catch coronavirus when you told them they wouldn't get it. It's like, come on guys. No one is saying that. Stop exactly. saying that. Just, we're not doing that. Okay. And, and you shouldn't be saying that, but you can say stuff that's valid and that can help people. So why would we stop doing that? It's ridiculous. So uh, our whole damn industry has an opportunity here in this crisis to step up and actually help people. So we should probably be doing that. So uh, that was just sort of the, uh, that's the end of it right there. So, Hey guys, that was the tip of the day, quite a bit longer than I normally do. I normally do five to 10 minutes. This is a little bit longer, but um, you know, that's the tip of the day and we'll talk soon. Thanks. For